Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is TJ. Uh, actually, my real name is Chia Dwellingmeyer, but that's a really difficult name, so I just call myself TJ. I'm one of the co-founders of Hippo, uh, and I'm uh, having the title of CMO. Actually, my talk and my Twitter handle is uh, underneath as well. It's a pretty difficult Twitter handle. Uh, my talk will be a lot less technical than we previously had. It's more a business talk. Um, and actually, this is one of the slides I uh, inserted this morning. Uh, are there any runners in the room? Some people jog or run or move, do something with their body. They raise their hand. Okay, yeah, actually, I flew in uh, yesterday from, uh, from Amsterdam. So I actually woke up at, at four this morning. And uh, I thought, oh, let's just go for a run. And I, I went for a run at the Fisherman's Wharf. And I was, I was running alongside. And uh, then I heard steps behind me. And I was like, OK, what's happening? Uh, somebody was overhauling me, was speeding up on me. So I was like, still. And one of the big things within our company is it's all about performance. It's about scalability, being fast. So I was like, OK, this is, this is not going to happen. So I was running alongside, and I was speeding up with him, and I was trying to look like, oh, this is part of my plan. Um, and in the end, what I did, I did this trick like, oh, I'm really in a hurry. So I speeded up, and I turned around and said, this is part of the game. I have to be back at 4.30. Uh, so I woke back. And that's actually a large part of my slides will be about speed and performance. And I will tell you more about that later. But this is a the slide I actually wanted to start with. And it's, it, fascina it fascinates me, as in people, this is where people become data. And that's what you see in a lot of these big data conferences, is that they look at people from a data perspective. And in my view, you have two kinds of ways to look at data. You have the, the big data, where they, they crunch a lot of data. And it's what I sort of look at, the Hadoop kind of way, it's, it's they, they keep big data sets and they crunch on that for, for days or hours and then see what kind of outcome there is. And this is exactly not the game we are playing. So uh, this, this could be really good when you're in the telco, for example, and you want to look at a new pricing strategy and you're, you're fine of waiting two hours on a new price point to set in for your uh, subscriptions or your mobile uh, subscriptions. But the thing we do is it's an online game. And we don't want to look at data, but we want to look at the people we are, which are actually on our online properties, so at the visitors. So that's what we call the, the flower dilemma. The, the dilemma we try to solve is the flower dilemma. And actually, if you walk into a flower store, the guy who wants to sell and try to sell you a flower is actually has a really high conversion rate. It's actually 95% of the people walking into a flower store, they come out with a flower. Actually, when you go into online, it's 2%. You're lucky if you reach 5%. So the thing here is, the challenge is, how can we get to a higher conversion rate? How can we get to better engagements? And there are large companies like Facebook, like Google, which understand that by personalizing your data, you can reach a higher engagement and you can improve that conversion. So. Uh, when you search for Google, you will get different results that when I would search for Hippo CMS, for example, than when somebody else in this room would search for Hippo CMS. And the larger e-commerce stores also understood this dilemma. So this is a, a, an article in the Wall Street Journal, and it's about Staples. And actually, a journalist found out that when you are near a competitor of Staples and you look on their website, you get a different price point on their products. So they want to try and make that deal. So they use the geolocation to personalize their pricing. And that's actually our vision. So what we do at Hippo is what we see now, if you look at the web, the web is pretty static. A lot of the websites, all the time when you go there, all the time they're the same. So what you see as a visitor is that online website is being presented to you in the same manner as a different visitor. So what we try to encompass, or what we try to achieve, is provide the tooling and the materials to developers and marketeers to create this personalized experience. 
But there's a challenge. And first I will dive into the technical challenge. And the thing is, previously, a lot of the websites are built up the same way as the top one. So what you do is you have your content, your applications, your components, they're actually all presented to everybody in the same manner. And this is fairly easy to achieve from a technical standpoint of view, if you want to scale and perform. So what you do here is you have a tool like ModCache or Squid or a caching layer in front of your uh, web server and make sure that everybody will see the same website. That ModCache or Squid will take out the stress from your content management system. So your content management system doesn't really have to perform. But here's the, cha the game changer. If you, if you personalize all your content, all your applications, all your components, everything on your website will be dynamic. Every visitor will look at a different experience. And it not necessarily needs to be just a different banner. It could be a completely different look and feel. It could be different applications. So when you do this, and you take into account that everything has to happen real time, now and live, and you also take into account that when, you're, when the page load of a website, when that increases, the abandon rate goes up tremendously. So speed is crucial, especially from a revenue standpoint of view. So when we added big data to personalize all the content, we looked at a NoSQL database which can deliver, deliver speed, which is the fastest in the market. That's how we ended up with Couchbase. So to take one step back, Hippo. Hippo, in brief, um, we're an open source Java web content management system. Uh, we're an award-winning system, being awarded an open source CMS of 2013 by CMS Critics, won all kinds of different awards. And the goal is we personalize experience across all channels. Actually, the whole personalization bit is in the enterprise edition, so also the Couchbase bit. We have headquarters in Boston and Amsterdam, and we work for companies like Disney, Condé Nast, MailChimp, Autodesk, and also Couchbase. So actually, today I would like to uh, congratulate Couchbase on their new website. They launched that yesterday, so we could have a small hand of applause for the Couchbase people going live. Oh, is it? Uh, so just being live, uh, I mean, it's, it's live yesterday, so there could be some, some small issues around the corner, but I think most of it looks great, and uh, it's obviously a fast-performing website. So what we look at Hippo, what, what, what's Hippo actually doing? And I, I thought the easiest way to do that was to just present, oh, this is always great. Uh, I don't want to have the access code. Make a huge difference to how relevant you are to a visitor. Yeah. Let's do a quick overview of Hippo CMS in just under three minutes. What you see here is our demo website, Go Green, an organization that is all about sustainability. We at Hippo believe that modern websites have to be dynamic and respond to the people who visit them. So this website changes content depending on what day it is, the location of the visitors, their preferences, and history. Hippo puts you in charge of defining the rules to deliver this targeted content. And it's just a few clicks in the CMS that can make a huge difference to how relevant you are to a visitor and how likely they are to convert. What you want to base your targeting on is extensible, so you can hook in any data source, like your CRM or transactional systems. So it's still clear who sees what, you can emulate visitors and preview your sites as they would see it. And if you're not quite sure what sort of visitors are on your sites, you can watch their behavior in real time and create new personas on the fly. You edit content either in context of the preview website or in a structured view, much like a file browser. You can choose the structure freely so it makes it much easier for you to find content. It supports translations into as many languages as you need, and they're just a click away. 
Pickle manages your media assets and files and resizes and re-renders images automatically to fit into your layouts, which is especially important if you manage multiple channels. Go Green comes not only in the website version, but also as a mobile site and a Facebook page, all managed with Hippo CMS. Business users have an overview of all their channels and their respective languages and regions and their previews. Hippo supports responsive design and repurposes content across all channels, but Hippo goes beyond that. You can actually, as a business user, manage each individual channel. We think that's really important because you don't just want to create a tiny version of your website, but actually create an experience for mobile visitors. This works because Hippo is super strict about separating content from layout. And that means you can repurpose content anywhere, also in external applications, like mobile apps, or feed them to your partner's websites or kiosks and in-store displays. So that was Hippo in just under three minutes. If you want to know more, we'll give you a personal tour or sign up for the next demo webinar. Hope to see you there. Okay, so this, this sort of in 20 minutes gave a quick overview of what our product is actually doing. And as I told, told you earlier, it's actually it's open source. So at onehippo.org, you can download our product. It's built in Java. Uh, so you can just play with it. So the goal of the product is that you store your content and you can republish that across all these different channels. So you can send it to affiliate marketing, to social, you can send it to mobile, tablet, the web. And you do this by personalizing all this data across all these channels. So what you do is you retrieve all the data from an anonymous visitor, and you use that data to engage with that person, to, to engage with the customer, to create a customer journey which is perfectly fitted to ex actually reach the goal you want to accomplish. To look at it from more a holistic view is you have a situation where you look at and you can enrich that data. So for example, when you know that somebody comes from Amsterdam, where I came from, and you know the weather is there, it's, it's raining, you can send different information based on that information by enrichment. The same you can do is when you retrieve data from a CRM or a different system. You put that all in that big data store together with the history you have of that visitor and all the personas you want to match, and then you create that customer journey. So from a more technical standpoint of view, you look at a registration. Yeah? So when somebody comes to your website, he makes a HTTP request. You collect all kinds of data, you target that data, and you use that data, for example, the IP address, to create the matching. So you match, and you do that all within Couchbase. So you use characteristics, target groups, personas to accomplish this personal message across all these channels. So this is what we've seen in uh, the demo video. So as a marketeer, you want to create all these personas. So you look at the visitors which are on your website. So on the left, you see the visitors, so where they're coming from. And then in the middle, you see how they browse to your online channels. And then on the right, you see all the matching. And you can actually adjust these matchings as a marketeer. So what you can do from this UI as a marketeer is create the rules and the targeting configurations you need to accomplish your goals. Again, from a technical standpoint of view, Hippo is based on Jackrabbit. It's a repository. It's a Apache. It's a JSR 170 on JSR 2A3. And then the delivery tier is based on the Spring framework. And the output could be JSON, could be XML, could be XHTML. And I would like to dive into the delivery tier, because that's where it gets interesting. And our delivery tier is one of the fastest in the market. And why is this crucial? This is what happens on the simplified model. You get a request, you do a URL matching, you fetch content, and then you compose the output. So this is for a straightforward web environment. But then, 
when you want to start personalizing this data, you get the info you need from Couchbase. So you collect data, you do scoring, fetch content, and then compose the output. So you, do a lot, you make a lot more steps. And all this has to happen within milliseconds. Because as I told you earlier on, when the page load would go up, you would lose all your visitors. So when we were making an assessment of which NoSQL store we were looking for, we had all these different criteria. And we looked, for example, support. Uh, what will happen if something happens with the Couchbase environment? Is there support? Can we trust on that? Is there a re replication mechanism? Is there a reliability? How mature is the product? What kind of query models do they have? How can we adjust or change the schema they have? Is it simple to use? There are all these criteria we evaluated, all these different NoSQL stores. But for us, the crucial aspect were two, scalability and performance. Because this, in the end, will make sure and will have the, the break or uh, will, will create, in the end, if the website will be successful or not. If the page loads within milliseconds or that people are leaving the website because they abandon because of the page load time. So again, this is how we came to Couchbase. And then to tell you a bit more, what, what are we actually doing within Couchbase? Uh, we're doing these relevance scoring. So we, we, we match all these different characteristics. Uh, that could be a search key term, that could be a browser uh, a pattern we see, we could be your geolocation, there could be different collectors attached to it. In the end, we create a mapping. So there's an algorithm which makes sure, hey, this, this is actually person Z. So we present all the configurations we have for person Z. But what would happen if Y and Z are the same? So we have to dive deeper. And that's what we often do. So we look at how did we actually come to these Y or Z. And we look at the averages and we look at how the highs and the lows are uh, creating this, this average. And you see here that the end result would be Z as there's less high fluctuation between the average. So all this mapping happens in real time when people are, people are visiting our websites. So just some customer cases. And obviously, I could come up with the easy one. Like, for example, uh, Disney is running on our website. Uh, they have 1.4 billion turnover on DisneyWorld.com. And obviously, they use a lot of rules to make sure that they can sell more products. So the e-commerce case is pretty obvious. But I like to dive into this Veleda case. So Veleda. Veleda is selling lotions, body lotion, shampoos, all these products on a national basis. And what they do is they have picked Hippo for one reason, because of this targeting, but also the openness. So what you see with Couchbase is that you can easily hook up different sources, data sources, to enrich data. So what do they actually do within Veleda? Within Veleda, they try to sell these products on a personal ma matter. And they know, for example, when women are pregnant, they will buy different products during their whole pregnancy. So when they're in week 10, for example, they will present different products than when you are in week 20. So when they send out an email blast to the people which are pregnant in week, and those are women obviously, uh, being pregnant in week 10, then when people would open up that email, we retrieve all that data from that email and we use that during the whole browse session. So all the data within Couchbase is enriched by all the data which is in the marketing automation platform and which is inside of the CRM. So by using extra data by enrichment, we can use a lot more personal uh, engagement and in the end get a higher uh, conversion rate. So this is a complete different case. So I like to present two other case studies which are not necessarily e-commerce related. So this is Ransat. Ransat is one of the largest uh, recruitment firms in the world. And they look for candidates, candidates which apply for jobs. And how do they do that? Obviously, they have websites and they show all the jobs. But in the end, there is smart software behind it to relieve the back office. 
And the, the thing they do is they don't want to have a zillion candidates matching to a profile. They want to have the right candidates. Because every candidate which applies, they have to look at what this uh, person was actually doing, what their CV looks like, and you have to reply to that person and say, hey, this is uh, not the right fit. And often there is a lot of communication going on, and this is actually a whole, uh, it's a costly matter. So what do they do? When a new person comes into the website, they look at the search terms, the geolocation, and how they browse on their website. And they use all this data to make sure that that person is actually a match or not a match. So when it's a match, they will present a small form, which is easy to enter. And when it's not a match, they will present a large form, which is a lot harder to present. So they use all this information to relieve their back office and make sure that they find the proper candidate in a quick manner. And this is a complete different case. This is actually uh, the Dutch police. Uh, and I love this case as it really shows how digital can touch lives. And actually, th so the police in the Netherlands, when you go to the police.nl, everything you see is based on hippo. And how they use the personalization is that when you are uh, a citizen and you're walking on the street and you're mobile and you check out the police, they use that context. So they say, hey, you're on mobile. We know where you are. We show you the nearest police office, uh, the, the, new, uh, the nearest station, the officer where you can uh, go to. They show the crimes which are being committed in that neighborhood. They show which people to look after or to look for. And they show all the police officers which are nearby. So when you re report a crime with your mobile, it's immediately being sent to the person which is actually responsible for your neighborhood. By this system, they actually help the citizens and the police officers to fight crime. So when we look at the future, what are we looking at? What do we try to do? There are some challenges. There's still within the big data, there is the CMO should love CIO uh, philosophy. 60% of the marketeers, they see a big opportunity within this big data. 52% of the CIOs say, we can't do this. They see too many questions coming up, and they say, we just cannot do what the marketeer is asking them to do. So when you look at these patterns, uh, to go in one of these questions, and I think for uh, the people which are in this room, I think these two are important. And you have the pattern of the false positive, and you have the pattern of the uh, negative. So th there's the difference, and one is that the pattern doesn't exist, and the other one is we fail to see the pattern. We call that patternicity, yeah? where the cost of making type 1 errors is greater than making a type 2 error. So for example, when you're walking down the street, and you hear steps behind you. You can go to the other side of the street, and then when you look back, it could be a cat, and then you made an error, which is not that bad. When it would have been somebody who wanted to hurt you, then you are in this pattern which you see in a need. And that's where a lot of marketeers are actually wired to make type one errors. So this is where a lot of people which create these UIs, which create this software, should think about how can we help these marketeers to not make these errors. So for example, Target, they made this stick and they, they, what they discovered, or at least they thought they discovered that they could predict and see which people are actually requesting all this data and which are actually pregnant. And they actually ended up sending emails to dads of girls about pregnancy. So this is where the marketeers obviously made one of these crucial errors. So what we look at, and, and this is um, a visualization of a client of ours, our, the, the visitor patterns. And we look at these patterns, and we get them out of uh, big clusters, and this is actually the crunching bit. 
So we're looking at different patterns. And what we try to do is make these patterns more available through a UI to marketeers, how they can improve the customer experience on all these online channels. We use all kinds of tooling for this. For example, uh, Kibana and Elasticsearch, we combine that with Couchbase, and then you get these sort of easy accessible statistics. And these are the statistics marketeers can configure and play with. But then we go one step further. As you've seen, within Hippo, we have a, a channel manager, and in this channel manager, you can configure the way how your uh, website appears. So you can change the components. And in this case, this is the Go Green. The Go Green is a, 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 no, a non-existing uh, company. When you download our product, you get the Go Green. So this is the home page of the Go Green. Uh, so it's just for a matter of speaking. But a marketeer comes in, and he thinks about, hey, shall I change the banner from the top and move the product above the vault? By this, people are easily, uh, they, they, they will see the, the products immediately and they won't see the banner in the first instance. They have to scroll to it. So the marketeer goes in and he says, okay, let's just see what happens. I save this configuration. I publish my changes. And then the idea is that we say, hey, why don't we A-B test this change? And we can actually say, hey, why don't we A-B test by default? By doing this, you see two versions. So 25% is seeing the old version, 75% is seeing the new version. And what we see here, obviously this is a non-existing case, but you see the conversion going up. So you say, hey, version A is better. Uh, better. But actually, we can do this for personas. So we can say, a certain persona, the impulse buyer, who just comes on on the side and looks at and immediately sees the products, the conversion goes up for this persona. But we have different personas. So for example, we have the loyal customer. So the customer who's aware of which products we have. So actually for this persona, the conversion rate goes down as the loyal customer is more interested in seeing a banner about new products, new activities, new events taking place, and he is aware of the products which are in that shop. So for the loyal customer, this is a bad change. So within the UI, we're now looking at saying, okay, how can we present this to marketeers? So we say, hey, Martin, did you know? You changed the homepage last week. And there was a massive increase of conversion with 23%. But unfortunately, for the loyal customer, they were not happy. The conversion rate dropped with 15%. So do you want to keep the change for the impulse buyer and stick to the old version for the loyal customer? Yes, no. So the first bit is what we call an insight. The second bit is actionable. So this is how you see that with big data, we try to make the insights we have actionable so a marketeer can react on it. That's actually my presentation. I hope uh, if somebody has questions, you can ask them now. Uh, if you are tonight at a party, I will be there as well. If you're running tomorrow, don't overhaul me, and um, I hope to meet you at the conference. Any questions? Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs>